Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Wade Nomura. I'm here with uh, the Rotary Clubs. And with me today, um, I have Art Fisher and Don O'Barr. We're going to be talking about um, the lights, some lights. And this is part of a project that we do as Rotary. The show itself is called Rotary and Serving the Community. So with that, Art, how many years have you been in Rotary? I've been in Rotary since uh, November of 2010, so about oh. five years mm -hmm. almost. Good for you. How about you, Don? I uh, joined Rotary in 2012 when we chartered uh, a Rotary e-club in Southern California. E-club, that's kind of unique. Now what is an e-club versus a regular club? So a Rotary e-club um, doesn't have a physical meeting location or place. We actually meet online, so people that don't have a, a scheduling or sometimes have scheduling conflicts can meet and uh, we meet uh, anywhere around the world. So we have 65 members in our club and there are people from Australia and Africa, um, all over the world that have joined our e-club. Oh, very interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. I see you brought some lights with you today. Um, Don, would you like to go over with us what, you, what you've got, some of the uh, items that you have here on the desk? So I'm also, uh, my day job is president of Unite to Light, and Unite to Light is a local Santa Barbara-based nonprofit organization. Uh, the uh, lights that we have designed were designed actually at UC Santa Barbara through the Institute for Energy Efficiency, and it's become a huge rotary project. Very good. Um, I see one thing in the middle, a canister there. You want to pick up that canister and show us what that's all about? And it doesn't look too solar to me. It's not actually, Wade. This is a, what looks like maybe a kerosene lantern, and this is being used around the world in uh, many villages where they don't have any lighting or electricity or solar powered energy. So after dark, for people to see, they um, light this uh, candle or uh, kerosene lantern and try to read. And so the project actually started Unite to Light because a professor from Ghana came to Santa Barbara and said, we need something for our students that need to have reading light at night other than this smoky, smelly, dangerous, uh, kerosene lantern. So that's how the project got started. So it looks like a prop to me. Uh, do you want to light that or should we take that chance? I don't think I'm we kidding. want to. I, I don't think we better do that. Uh, we don't want these lights to go up in smoke here. Um, so in place of that, um, you brought with you some samples of some of the lights? So the small light is uh, the children's reading light that we first started with about four years ago. And this light fits in this tiny little box. It weighs about four ounces and it can go around the world. It uh, is solar powered. So during the day, you put it out in the sun and then at night, uh, turn on the very bright light so that children can read. I see. Some uh, information on that then. How long would they have to charge that light before it's functional and how long would it last, that charge last? So this solar light uh, takes about eight hours of full direct sunlight on the solar panel and there's one AA rechargeable battery inside that holds the power and then will last about four to six hours at night for reading. Okay, I see. What happens if, uh, since it's solar charged, if it's raining or something like that? Are they still gonna be functional, usable, or? This one actually is water, pretty water resistant. We have a little uh, cover on the switch, so if any water gets inside, we've actually done some experiments. I threw it in my swimming pool and it still <laughs> works. So um, they're pretty robust. We uh, test them, drop them off of an eight foot ladder on cement and uh, they still last and they continue working. So it's a pretty, pretty uh, uh, robust and, and uh, reliable light. I see. Um, do you want to go over a little bit of the construction of that? Um, for example, what is the light filament? Yeah, this um, interesting is one of the LED lights inside, and the LED was actually designed by Shuji Nakamura, the, uh, the recent Nobel Prize winner in physics at UCSB. So he's the designer of the LED, and it's a very long-lasting, very bright light, very cool energy light. Um, and then a very, as I mentioned, a very simple solar panel. So the idea was to create something that was very inexpensive, affordable for people in developing countries, and that would replace uh, the cost of kerosene. And I think Art has a little bit of information about the cost of uh, a general kerosene um, monthly budget. Right, we found out that in Africa, uh, if you go out at night to a rural village, you'll see these cans along uh, the, the village roads. 
and uh, they'll be burning. And it turns out that uh, the cost of kerosene for a kerosene lamp for a month of operation is approximately $13. The uh, solar light has one AA rechargeable battery, which will last two years. That's 700 charges. So you put it out in the sun during the day for about five hours or as long as it's sunny, and it gives uh, four to six hours of light at night. And after two years, you replace that battery. And in our rotary projects, we par partner with rotary clubs around the world. They replace the batteries and recycle them. But the battery is only $2. So that works out to $0.08 cents a month with the solar light, so it's economic justice, in addition to being a, a safer, brighter source of light that has multiple uses, as opposed to the kerosene lamp. Very good. Now, the intent of that light um, was originally for home use? Was it for educational components, or what, what was the intent? The first intent? So the first intent was really for students, uh, so that after they got done with their chores in the evening after school was over, they could sit down and study and read. And since that time, we've found a myriad of uses that were sort of unexpected for this little solar light. Um, we actually have now uh, sent them with Rotary in midwife birthing kits, and the women will wear them around the neck, and so they're able to deliver babies safely in the dark without lighting a flame, and um, again, without that um, pollution to the environment. Very good. Um, I see that the light's flexible, so you carry it, and you can wear it around your neck, but also I notice there's a hole in the back of that on the bottom. Is that for hanging, or? Yes, so there's a little nail hole at the bottom of the light, and what we also have seen is that a lot of women are trying to do their handiwork in the evening time when it's cooler and so they can hang this in their hut and have a broader space for them to um, do their beading or their crafting or their sewing or whatever they need to do in the evening time when it's a little bit cooler so they can use the light and have used this light for that purpose um, also one of the rotary projects has taken this light and given it to the nomads in niger and the nomads are um, this nomadic tribe of people that travel from place to place and so they really don't have very many possessions. And this light has proved invaluable for them because they have lots of sun in the desert and they're able to carry it with them uh, with their uh, small number of possessions. Now, how many countries do you have, have these lights in right now? Do you have any idea? Well, I think we're in about 65 countries. Wow. We've uh, recently tallied up the number of solar products that we've distributed and it's around 78,000 solar products to um, just about everywhere around the world wow. that needs um, lighting. Great. Do you, is there one project specific that you recall that kind of uh, impacted how you felt about what you're doing changing the world? I think a recent one for me is uh, a project that was in Uganda, uh, an organization called Vigilante Kindness is, is going over there and teaching people how to read and write. And they took some small lights with them and found out later that they were using the lights to scare away the elephants from their gardens at night because the elephants would come in and trample the gardens and eat all the food for the people in the village. And just by shining that light and not having to kill the elephants or shoot them, they were able to save their gardens and save <laughs> the elephants. That's great. So that was not <laughs> one of the intent purposes of the light. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How about you, Art? Have you been involved with uh, distributing some of those around the world? Well, uh, the Rotary Clubs uh, have several projects. The first project in Carpinteria was to distribute 1,700 lights to uh, schools and orphan orphanages in, in India. And what we found was that uh, some cities have some electricity, but it's completely unreliable, or it's only portioned out for part of the day. So uh, you think of developing countries as not having any electricity or having interrupted or unreliable electricity. So uh, the lights have multiple uses. One interesting use for me is medical use for dentists, doctors, uh, paramedics. Uh, the Fosse Foot Project in Africa distributes a light in their backpacks because the light is brilliant enough for sutures and for uh, analyzing uh, uh, different foot diseases. Very good. So um, 
construction wise, just curious, you have that one uh, battery in there. Does that battery say it, you're using it consistently? How long does that battery actually last? Is it going to be two years, three years, five years? Actually, 700 chargers are about two years. Wow. That's so it'll mean. charge to uh, full capacity. It'll be used at night for uh, four to six hours. The next day, uh, during the day, it'll charge up again. You can do that for a period of two years. The unit itself will probably last 10 to 15 years. Uh, so uh, it's, it's got a, a lot of su sustainability built in. Good, good. Now, again, on projects, have you actually been to one of the project sites? Well, the, the I, there's two answers to that. <laughs> the, uh, the actual site that I visited was in uh, Moralia, in a, a village outside the last town in an area in a government school where some of the children actually rode to the school on donkeys. <laughs> and uh, the children's homes did not have running water or electricity. So we were able to disperse through a rotary club in uh, Moralia lights on a, on a fairly regular basis. I mean, the last three years, we've uh, sent lights to uh, these sorts of uh, villages in Mexico. That was an amazing ex experience. Great. Now, how about uh, Rotary's involvement? Both of you are Rotarians. Um, how did the Rotary, I would say, either model or partnership work out? And how is that working out so far? Well, uh, I became interested in Unite to Light through Rotary. It was uh, August 8th in 2012. I saw <laughs> the president of Unite to Light demonstrate one of these little lights. And I had a science background. And it was immediately compelling. And the demonstration was much like we explained today. And uh, so uh, our club started a liaison with Unite to Light. And we've made that our project, the Carpentry of Morning Rotary Club of Dispersing Lights. And our first big grant was to India. And we partnered with uh, seven other clubs, clubs in India, and we dispersed 1,700 lights to uh, uh, school, schools and orphanages in rural India. Wow. And the interesting, maybe we should uh, tell about the international conferences. We could do that. <laughs> Love uh, to hear about it. Uh, Don and I, early on, uh, went to the International Rotary Conference with an attendance of around 39,000 Rotarians from around the world. Where was this at? In uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Oh, okay. Huge, uh, huge conference. We uh, were able to distribute around 1,000 lights to Rotarians from around the world to expose them to the opportunity and the uh, utility of this light. And that was an experience I never would have dreamed of if it weren't for Rotary. Great. How about you, Don? Uh, Involvement-wise with Rotary and through Rotary. Well, I sat down uh, before we were talking about this sh doing the show to write down all the different locations that Rotary has been able to facilitate the delivery of these small solar lights, and I couldn't even list all of the places. So literally, there have been hundreds of projects from various Rotary clubs nearby, but also some from Texas and Michigan and all over the United States and internationally, people that are Rotarians that are supporting us. Um, recently, a gentleman from New Zealand bought lights for Fiji, the Fijian Islands. Um, students there didn't have lights. so. Uh, so many different projects that are happening all the time and just this past weekend I met with a woman who's going back to the Philippines after um, the typhoon Yolanda she uh, decided that these people really did need light and um, it, it goes beyond just uh, a, a source of um, a brilliant light to read by but it's in a lot of places after a disaster it's it's a source of hope and um, uh, you know sort of that light beyond the um, the challenge of, of disaster and b rebuilding. Um, I guess the, the interesting thing with um, the lights in Rotary is that um, Rotor you know, Rotary has this areas of focus and literally the lights do economic empowerment, they help education. So several of those areas of focus, the lights really speak to those areas. That's great. And knowing that Rotary is in 200 countries, I guess that's a big benefit too for distributing some of these lights or a lot of these lights. That's great. I see you also brought uh, a larger unit. Uh, one of you want to talk about that one, what that's all about? 
Well, this is our um, the next answer to a product that, um, again, the people in these countries came to us and said, well, we like the little one, but we need something a little more robust, a little larger. And we also have cell phones. So I think maybe many of you have heard this by now, but there are more cell phones around the world than clean toilets. So people have access to having a, a mobile phone, but not necessarily um, sanitation. And the cell phones really have become the lifeline for people to communicate. Um, they're too far away. Uh, it also helps medically to, you know, to get people to get tests done when they need to. So, so the cell phone has become the lifeline of people all around the world, and yet they still have no electricity or way to charge their phones. So the brighter light was designed with a USB port in the back, and uh, we have a little cord that goes into the back of the, the light, and then we are able to plug in the phones and recharge a cell phone. And believe it or not, they actually work with the famous iPhones that people have here. <laughs> and I charge my iPhone in about two hours with a solar-powered device. Um, same sort of principle that the small light works during the day, putting it in bright sunlight. Uh, this one, the light's going to last about 24 hours. So you really have a long-lasting light in this situation. A little more robust battery that's not replaceable but will be good for a long time and uh, then still have time to charge your phone, so. So you could charge and also use that still then at nighttime for light. Yep, oh, we're working on some projects right now with some women talking about economic empowerment where women are actually taking one of these and going to their neighbors and charging their phones and actually making a living, so earning some income doing that. And yet they still have some light left over at night to help their family and to keep everybody safe in the dark. Now, being larger, does that uh, then function instead of a smaller light that's for an individual? Would this be able to s sustain a little bit more light, create more light for a family? Definitely. This is about three times the brightness of the little one, so certainly provides a broader beam of light. Same features. There's a little hole on the bottom so they can hang this one, and it'll pretty much light up an entire hut. Oh, nice. Um, the switch on that one's different than the other one. Is, that, is there a reason for the light switch in the way it works, the function of this one? It is, we have a currently, we have this push button switch on this one, which allows for two brightness settings. So there's a dimmer light and uh, maybe just an ambient light for low light needed, and then a brighter light for maybe more intense, um, bigger room lighting, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, again, waterproof or uh, water re resistant, I would say, something like yeah, that. Yeah, we don't recommend people leave this one out in the rain because it's not so good for the inner workings. This one has a little more complicated circuit inside, so we definitely try to tell people put it outside when it's not raining, and hopefully if it gets a little bit of water on it, it's okay, dries off. But um, that one is uh, meant to not be in direct rain all the time. I wouldn't throw that one in my swimming pool. <laughs> So um, the weight of that one, do um, you have approximate weight of that? This one weighs about 12 ounces, so again, about three times the size of the, the little light. Still very portable, okay. fits in a little box, a um, little larger than this one, and, and just folds down, pretty compact Got device. It. So thinking about that, 12 ounces, that's about a weight of a flashlight. Have you sold many of these to backpackers, for example, that would need not only the light, but also a recharging system? They have a market definitely in the United States. Anybody that likes to go hiking and backpacking, uh, again, they're very um, durable. And uh, when you purchase one in the United States, we have a project that if you buy one, another one gets donated. Mm -hmm. So you're paying um, a little bit extra, but part of that is tax deductible and goes to someone, uh, hopefully, a project somewhere that doesn't have electricity and really needs one. Now, how many of your friends actually have these in their house? Do you have any idea? You are, or are you? Uh, I use one every, every day. I put it out during the day and I charge my iPhone at night. And I think about four of our Rotarians uh, have access to these in their homes. Our Rotary Club president is gonna hike the John Muir Trail, past president, uh, and uh, she has this model and it, it will be for navigation and uh, oh. communication. Great. So you'll be out of cell phone range, but you'll still be able to use your navigation features. Seems like also a great one to have in the house in case there's a power out or just some sort of a disaster, I would say. I just talked to your sister-in-law this weekend and she wants them for, <laughs> for gifts for well, the my holidays. My sister-in-law, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wonder if I'm getting one. <laughs> it's very good, it's a good idea. There's an interesting project that uh, I understand a, a uh, sets up a, an entire library. And uh, one club, I believe, is shipping Kendall's. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the Kendall is loaded with books, and the Kendall can be charged by this larger uh, charger light. And so you're sending a whole library uh, for very limited poundage and uh, uh, maximum use. It's a great idea, very good idea. So basically it, it's a library, it becomes a library for a house, a household with that Kendall project. How many of these uh, would you say on the larger scale, the charging ones, ha have you distributed out? And you said this is the newer model of the two. We just started last year, and so it's about 5,000 lights that have gone out on this big one. So really? we 5,000? Mm -hmm, and we're uh, in production phase right now. We're, we've a, a, a found a new factory, and we'll be ramping up production. This is really going to be our big seller. I think everybody wants one of these, so we shouldn't have any problems um, doubling or tripling that number in the next year. Sounds good. Um, where are you selling these, or where would people that were interested in something like this get these lights? Uh, our club sells s either the solar light or the solar charger at festivals around town. Uh, the lights were available in Goleta for the fireworks. They're available at the Ca Avocado fes Festival in Carpinteria. Um, their uh, Earth Day, if, if you came to Earth Day, we had a booth and we did a, a a pretty high volume on Earth Day. If you're looking for one right away, you can go to, what's the shop in Goleta? Uh, the Chocolate Gallery, believe it or not. it's not, You wouldn't really necessarily think of solar lights and chocolate as going together, but uh, they're very philanthropic out there and they have our solar lights on display and, and just have a space for us to sell lights so people can go there and uh, all the proceeds go directly to Unite to Light. Um, certainly people can contact us through the website and we do have an online sales um, catalog online, so. If you're at the other end of the region in Carpentria at Murphy King Realty, you could get a light uh, anytime. And for a while, Patagonia was selling the little ones. I'm not sure if they still have them in stock, but um, they were big supporters and uh, carried the small lights in their stores. I've heard some of the uh, Rotary Clubs actually sell these lights for a retail price, but do a two for one. Is, is that still happening yes. there? Or? Yes, uh, Carpentry Morning does a two for one at the Avocado Festival. So you purchase a, uh, a solar light, you take it home, or you can give it away as a gift. Many people give them as hospitality gifts when uh, they're at a person's home or at a dinner. So a gift to the host. And uh, we sell them for $20, and uh, our club then earns credits and those are the credits we use to disperse lights around the world. Uh, just in the last six months, through this mechanism over the years of selling at festivals and selling to friends and neighbors at holiday times, uh, we've uh, sent lights to the Philippines, to Nepal, to Zimbabwe, to Ghana, and uh, Mexico, and in the fall there'll be lights going to Sri Lanka and these are all from the credit lights where uh, a first world person buys the light for use at home for emergencies for hiking bicyclists buy the lights uh, uh, it's it, there's an amazing number of uses for first world people great I heard um, also that there was a fairly large project thousands of lights went to Bangladesh that was uh, through rotary and a cooperative effort do you know anything about that one Don Yes, we actually had a pretty um, generous sponsor, corporate sponsor, and they um, paid for the lights to go, and then the Bangladesh um, people were integral in di distribution of the lights. So we literally had, I think, over 2,000 lights that went to um, that country, and that's probably one of the poorest countries in the world. Okay, and that was distributed, I believe, by Rotarians there, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's great. They um, helped actually get them through customs. That sometimes is a big issue, and <laughs> so Rotarians on the ground in those locations are very helpful to um, smooth things over with customs officials and bring those lights in when they know for philanthropic uses. I heard that it's also the case in a lot of the areas where you have disasters or catastrophes. Uh, first responders come in there, and it's usually Rotary clubs that are first ones there only because they live in the area. Yeah. Have you seen that and worked with any of them? in any of these projects with lights? Definitely. Um, my e-club, the Rotary e-club of One World, actually um, was helpful in getting lights to the Philippines after the, the big disaster there. And so um, 
we literally got together and sponsored several lights to go in and luckily one of our e-club Rotarians lives in the Philippines and he was able to figure out how to get them distributed and so um, they went directly from the factory right into the Philippines and very unusual that people were able to get in product during those disaster times and this is one of those instances where because we had rotary people on the ground they knew exactly how to get them through and how to distribute them. Great. How many people would you um, anticipate or guess um, actually have no light right now living in our world? About uh, two billion of the seven billion people really? in uh, the world are estimated not to have any reliable electricity. Great. Energy is a p and poverty is a killer. It is yeah. true, yeah. I wanted to add one thing. This is a really fun project <laughs> for Rotary Clubs. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun getting into it. We uh, use this hat at conventions and festivals and so on to draw attention to our booths. <laughs> and does it work? It, and it works. <laughs> and, and I can see it, it might. <laughs> it makes us smile and it makes them smile, but it really uh, lures the people into, well, what are you selling? And then they're captivated by the solar utility. That's great. Outstanding. I see, too, you have uh, rotary stickers on top of these things as part of the partnership, I would anticipate or guess. Right, and Rotarians will probably recognize the theme, Light Up Rotary, which was our last year's uh, right. international theme. All right, that, that's great. Um, Effort-wise, by rotary leadership, I would say worldwide, have you had very much cooperative efforts from them helping you out, assisting you in distributing these lights? Well, I'd say without rotary, uh, the the difficulty would greatly increase when you ship to any foreign country. Uh, it's true in uh, Africa and India that the connection with the Rotary Clubs allowed the shipments to be received securely, safely, and uh, without tariff. That's great. Uh, outstanding. So we got uh, just a few more seconds here to go on. Anything that you would like to pass on to the audience? Tell them about the lights, uh, how to get involved, how to get active with the lights. I would say there's all kinds of ways to get involved. So you could volunteer, you could go on our Facebook page, like us on Facebook, um, buy a light, give a light, all kinds of ways to, to be involved. So we need your help and um, everybody can light up the world. And we'd be happy to come and give presentations to not only Rotary Clubs, but any organization that has a worthwhile project that they think this would fit. Very good. And again, that's through Rotary that you're going to be helping out. Is that part of the mission that Rotary has? Service above self. Service above self. Well, with that, thank you very much for coming. I uh, appreciate the time and effort that you've had, and good luck getting these things out around the world. Uh, outstanding project, and I think you'll change the world with these lights. Thank you, Wade. Thank, thank you, you very much. Wade.